Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Please excuse this kind of uh, early morning voice here. Well, we're on number 15 of our Science of Triangles <clears throat> webinars. And um, we're continuing with these uh, somewhat uh, cosmological considerations because, you know, if we think that the triangles originate on this planet, we are certainly um, underestimating the scope and extent of them. They, uh, they are really uh, solar systemic, they are cosmic, they are super cosmic. And when we have our little uh, meditation, you know, here at the end, whereas we normally usually think of connecting only to the network of uh, triangles that involves this planet, we can at least have in mind that the entire universe is uh, substanded by um, a huge number of triangles involving great centers and sources. The entire cosmic web of the universe is um, organized through triangles. Uh, I just want to say also that in the chat box, um, <clears throat> I have given you three links. Now, uh, I'm, I'm finishing up with a series on the first, second, and third initiations. There's a couple more to go on the first initiation, and uh, at least one of them will be uh, up today, number 13. And then there are direct links to the second initiation commentaries and to the uh, third initiation commentaries. So if you are interested, these are all on YouTube, and I think uh, it gives you a chance to study these matters somewhat in depth and to correlate uh, these factors. That's the purpose here. It's not so much the factual study, <clears throat> Although I have managed that, I think, by reading Master DK's words. So it never hurts to, to hear his words uh, with clarity. So we hear his words, and uh, then we begin to correlate the various items of information. And it encourages us to work as best we can to assimilate uh, his wonderful uh, teaching. Um, before the year 2025, as much as may be possible. Now, every once in a while, I think I'm not sure how to control this. I'm kind of alone alone today because my two uh, <clears throat> backup people that are usually here, uh, BL and Joe, cannot be here. So I hope I handle this reasonably <clears throat> somehow <laughs> and uh, don't suddenly go off the air. But I just want to... Uh, Welcome you, Alex, Annette, Antoinette, uh, Catherine, Clesia, John, Karen, uh, Catherine, Carrie, uh, Leslie, Lona, Lynn, Marianne, Mariut, uh, Michael, Natni, uh, Nienke, uh, Rebecca, Risto, Stacia, uh, Stephen, uh, I think Tuya should be over there with me on the other side, and Vera, and Zenaidi, and Ann Veronica. Welcome to you all uh, in this process. And as we go along reading, now I realize this material from esoteric astrology is not easy, and especially if you haven't done a lot of study of astrology, but at least it deals with the great uh, cosmic sources of the triangles and where it all originates. And later we're going to have um, different kinds of compilations that deal with the triangles and will zero in and focus with uh, specificity. And hopefully you'll get a large picture of the origin of the energies that we are using in a very practical way to redeem the etheric body of the planet. So every once in a while there are these beeps of coming and going, and I'm sorry about that, but uh, I don't know how to continue. <laughs> I don't know really how to control that at the moment. Uh, so just try to ignore that. It will not uh, go on forever because I assume, you know, and if, if you 
you know, wish to leave the uh, uh, the webinar for any reason, just just leave yourself on for a while so we don't get your beep as you go, and we can continue to concentrate. You know, just go away from the computer or something like that. All right. Um, so now we will uh, do our work in the uh, academic part, and then we'll have a, a little meditation at the end of it all that will link us not only to the network of triangles on the Earth, but to the larger uh, planetary triangles network and zodiacal triangles network, which we have been studying now. And then, uh, I don't think we'll, we'll go too much into the cosmic links, but they are there as well, and it's very, I think, uh, very interesting. Okay, now let's see where we are here. Um, I'm kind of flying solo here a little bit, but uh, I'll do my best, all right? <clears throat> all right, so here we are, number 15, Science of uh, Triangles, and I trust that... Uh, this is coming through to you. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, so far, the green bar shows that I'm being recorded. So, all right. I hope that that's the process. Now, let's continue. Now, notice, remember where we were. We had just gone through quite, a, um, quite a, an extensive map which showed us how the seven rays reach uh, our particular planet and the signs of the zodiac through which they come. Now, you know, the uh, we're talking about this great deity, and I um, just want to show you sort of a, uh huh, this is what I have. These are some of Tuya's new charts, but I don't yet have the, uh, the really big one. Um, but maybe I should have it, but I, I don't seem to have it. Um, but but this is the this is the very big chart here, and uh, we're dealing with a being called um, well we can't say much about that being. We're, it's called the one about whom not may be said, and uh, according to my conception, there are seven of these in our local cosmic environment and 49 of them, each little triangle is such a being, in a more extended uh, cosmic environment. And they have chakras too, uh, these beings. And I'll, and I'll show you a very interesting um, sort of a map or little tabulation from um, <laughs> a treatise on cosmic fire. I think it's 293. There it is. And um, if you've read this, you know, you probably find that it's quite interesting. Uh, it goes all the way from a human being who has etheric uh, centers to um, a heavenly man whose centers are planetary chains, to a solar logos whose centers um, are basically planetary schemes like our Earth or Mars or Venus or something like that, then into a cosmic logos. Now, that's not yet the one about whom naught may be said, of which we frequently speak. Um, <clears throat> this has great suns and solar systems for its chakras. And then finally, we reach this being uh, called the unknown. And this unknown is that one about whom not maybe said it's a little triangle. And uh, great constellations are the chakras of this uh, being. Uh, and these great constellations are the ones through which something we call a cosmic logos works. Now, we're familiar with the idea that our solar system <clears throat> excuse me, is informed by a great being called a solar logos. You know, our particular sun god, you might say, with its second ray uh, personality and second ray, um, a second ray soul and maybe even finally a second ray monad. 
uh, is such a being, a sun god, a solar logos. But beyond that, there are beings that work through seven major solar logoi and many others. And uh, they have triangles too. And this goes on and on and on, the triangular formation of the web of space. So what I'd like you to do, at least, is to consider how vast this triangles network really is. Now, when we're doing our normal um, redemptive triangle work, <coughs> excuse me, to try to raise humanity, we don't necessarily have to think of all these cosmological things. We're thinking about uh, goodwill, love, light, and maybe the will to good between human beings on this planet. And that's quite enough for the really, really practical work. But when you think about the larger picture, it really is universal. And that's the kind of thing that I hope um, you are, uh, you know, understanding just a little bit. And you say, well, how can we little human beings think about that? Well, the master DK has given us some material to help us think about that. <laughs> and it will certainly expand our mind and it will open up. It's part of building the Antikarana. To think in this way is part of building the Antikarana. It is utilizing the abstract mind, you know, and making these connections, which are not about concrete things right down here on Earth, but as far as uh, Earth things are concerned, it is the sphere of abstraction. So that's my, you know, little, you know, sort of presentation. Uh, there are all these logoi, and they exist, and um, there are triangles between them, and I think it's quite, you know, an amazing uh, picture. And, you know, uh, later, if you are hearing these sort of coming and going beeps, um, mm -mm -mm. well, let me try something. I can try something, and uh, I'm not on hold now, so maybe the beeps will stop if I just put on hold beeps. I don't know. I need my two backups uh, people <laughs> who know more about this than I do. All right, now I'm going to read a little bit, and um, I will say this. Um, this is abstract material. And it's way out there in some ways, but it's in the book Esoteric Astrology, which is uh, part of the treatise on the seven rays, and it's supposed to give the key, in a way, to the new uh, psychology, all of it. Psychology, healing, astrology, rayology. It's a wonderful treatise, and Master D.K. said it is written on the second ray, whereas the book A Treatise on Cosmic Fire is written on the third ray and on the first ray. So do your best, you know, make notes of things that you found interesting, and we'll have a little uh, chance for you to uh, ask questions or make comments, or in general, um, oh, I, I open this thing up to the whole field of occultism, you know. Um, in general, if you have questions about spiritual occultism, then we can also uh, deal with that. All right, so I'm not sure how far I'll get here, but I'll just try to uh, play it by ear. Okay, the, the analogy between the microcosm and the macrocosm will be helpful. Now remember, the law of analogy, <clears throat> and more specifically, the law of correspondences, which is more in detail, is the great interpretive law of our universe. So that when you want to find something out about an area of universal life about which you don't know much, go to what you do know and create analogies. So um, the analogy between the microcosm, that's pretty much who we are, and the macrocosm, and there are many of these in which we live and move and have our being, will therefore be helpful. And the relation of the cell or atom, now we are a little atom, our planetary logos is an atom, our solar logos is an atom, uh, and, uh, and beyond, you know, 
uh, greater beings are atoms too. It depends on what type of being they are. Now, he's given us an analogy here. I've always found it a little difficult to figure out. Uh, and the relation of a cell or atom in one of the abdominal organs, for instance, to the soul on its own plane will illustrate with accuracy a still greater relationship and uh, interplay. And what I've figured about this is that somehow um, uh, our local cosmic logos, um, uh, let's see, is a solar plexus center uh, and thus related to the abdominal organs. Now, I think, you know, that can probably be followed out and uh, it will yield some interesting ideas. In other words, these great beings, these cosmic logoi, are the various chakras in that being we call uh, the one about whom naught may be said. And I have a feeling about this that our sun and some local stars like uh, may be serious, but certainly Procyon and Alpha Centauri and other, you know, uh, Aquila, nearby stars and so forth are part of this uh, solar plexus in this great being. That's my impression. The sacral center is also a possibility, but it's definitely one of the lower centers. In other words, we do not live in a sacred cosmic logos, not yet. And our solar system and our sun is heading towards sacredness just the way our Earth is, but is not yet sacred. Venus is sacred as a planet, but Earth is not. So there's the necessity to achieve a certain level of unfoldment before we can call it sacred. And that pretty much involves a kind of uh, fifth initiation when we're dealing with these great beings. So, you know, the idea to get here <clears throat> is that everybody is moving on and up. Everything is moving on and up and being restored uh, into its universal state. But these lives are all, you know, interplaying and influencing each other just the way we human beings influence each other. So in this interplay of lives and their emanating streams of force and energies, and in the major determining life activities of that, in which all forms, including the human, live and move and have their being, you know, think big now, uh, is to be found the inevitability of ultimate achievement. Because of all this interplay, there will be ultimate achievement according to universal purpose. The unalterability of law and the expression, finally, of divine, unchangeable purpose, and I want to say on a universal scale. Okay, so I, what I have to do is uh, copy that so my inserts are not quite so big. Uh, in the evolutionary effect of this relation of life, the great beings, to form is to be found also the undeviating way of an expanding, ever-unfolding consciousness until, once again, you and I and all beings reach again the universal consciousness which we had when we began, plus the gain of all the interaction which has occurred in the universe. So we have, we are treading the way of expanding, ever unfolding consciousness. It's all about the second aspect in a way. And all of us are becoming deeper and wider in our consciousness. And when we do that, that's called initiation. So whether this be macrocosmic or microcosmic, there's going to be an expanding, ever unfolding consciousness. Hence the will of God moves the worlds, and the love of God determines results. Well, that's quite a statement, isn't it? We could ponder on that one, couldn't we? The prime mover is the will of God. It pushes things forward. It drives forward through space. It's this ongoing progressive motion. And the love of God determines the right relationships, which the archetype of every whole tries to see worked out. There is an archetype for this universe 
an archetype for every family of galaxies, an archetype for every galaxy, an archetype for our one about whom not may be said and our cosmic logos and solar system. There's a purpose behind it all. And in your life, there is a divine purpose which is hidden in your monadic nature. And in all of our millions of years of evolution, that's what we are trying to work out. And our first step is to come in contact with our soul and the solar angel that helps to supervise our development because in the consciousness of that solar angel is the purpose of the monad which we are. It comes in as an assistant to the monad at this time, and it knows what we as a spirit are trying to achieve. I know these are big things, but it doesn't hurt to think in a large way. And why? Well, you know, uh, because then we will learn to live more impersonally and we'll learn to live as an aspect of our planetary logos. And, and frankly, we'll learn how to live, as the masters now know, within the spiritual triad. Our point of tension will be the spiritual triad. And, uh, you know, here, here. And not so much where it is right now, down on the uh, sort of... Uh, concrete mental level and for many people it's not even there so we are elevating our point of tension all the time and hopefully um we will achieve uh, in fact we will it's just a question of time all the beings in universe all beings are extensions of one being and all those extensions return to the source and all of them achieve, but the time equation is in our hands to a very great extent. Okay, now we go on a little bit. Okay, uh, in considering, in, in this consideration of the basic science of triangles, and the Tibetan says, I had well nigh said in the contemplation of the basic science of triangles, for that is what it necessarily should be if understanding is to be the real reward of our efforts the relation of the three basic energies affecting our solar system you know from the three great constellations and the predominant effect of one of them in any cyclic expression in time and space must always be borne in mind now i just want to say a word about the sequence uh, of meditation now, you know how it goes, and this is something that you need to, to memorize. Okay, so concentration, well, <laughs> I'd like to do it correctly, right? Concentration uh, relates to Leo. Meditation, sorry, relates to Virgo. Uh, contemplation relates to Libra. So this is a Libran factor where you begin to unify uh, the subject and object, and you are the contemplator, but at the same time, you discover yourself to be that which is contemplated. Now, you know, I have to recommend From Intellect to Intuition by Alice Bailey. I think, you know, it's a wonderful book. And she really, really understood meditation in a very deep way. And uh, I've rarely seen, I don't think I have seen, descriptions of the meditative process, especially the contemplative process, which are as clear and as good uh, and as light producing as what you find written by Alice Bailey there in that book, From Intellect to Intuition. So go back to that if you, or if you haven't read it, get into it, and you'll see the stages of meditation beautifully described. Now, uh, the next one is Scorpio. 
uh, relates to illumination. Now, you know, it's a sign of darkness in many ways, and we're used to thinking that Taurus relates to illumination, and indeed, indeed it does. Taurus is the mother of illumination, but remember, Scorpio is related to the Buddhic plane and to humanity as a whole, as a light bearer. And when the higher parts of Scorpio, given to us through Mercury, make an impact on our consciousness, it's going to be through a great light. Now, Sagittarius uh, relates to inspiration. And I think we can see that. We even see it in the way Sagittarian people behave and they breathe in this uh, very high enthusiasm. And Capricorn relates to initiation. Okay, and I, I threw in a couple more, you know, he stopped there, but Aquarius uh, relates to universalization. And finally, Pisces, and I don't think he would dispute this uh, because he talks about it in many different ways. Pisces relates to identification. So those are your phases of initiation uh, or of, of meditation. Uh, and they are progressive. Now, it doesn't mean if you have one of these signs that you're necessarily involved with that particular factor. It all depends about where you stand. But if you are a person who is ready to learn to contemplate, it's a high state, then Libra will be very important. And uh, if you are a person who is ready for the light of the spiritual triad via the Antikarana, then Scorpio will be very important, and so forth. So um, bear those in mind, uh, and uh, you know it doesn't hurt to memorize a few things along the way. So in the contemplation of the science of triangles, for that is what it necessarily should be if understanding is to be the reward of our effort, and indeed that's what we want, the relation of the three basic energies affecting our solar system, beyond it, of course, <coughs> Excuse me. and the predominant effect of any one of them in any cyclic expression in time and space must always be borne in mind. Now remember about triangles. Triangles rotate. And at one point, uh, a given point will be the main one, and then another, and then another. So these are called, uh, the Tibetan tells us, triangles in revolution. And there is a law that we can hardly fathom, only the principle of it. It's the great law of mutation. Now, it's, it's got uh, extreme complexity to it. It's the big cosmic dance, and it's utterly intricate. Um, but let's just say that everything finally comes into relation with everything else and reciprocally. And before long, we have a completely unified cosmos. That is what happens. Now, one illustration of this normally emerges in our minds if it be remembered that in this world cycle, now, excuse me, uh, what is a world cycle? Well, he's very vague about these time periods, you know, but, in this particular case, I think a world cycle is the duration of a solar system. You know, Manvantaras, there are many different kinds of them. There are many different kinds of cycles. And remember that only a master who has somewhat mastered the third subplane of the atmic plane, and that's this one here, has what is called all knowledge and the knowledge of cycles. So we are, you know, still a long way away from that, and he's purposefully blinding us so we don't know too much. I'm remembering um, this man, a theosophist, called uh, A.P. Sinnott, and he was somehow in touch with Master K.H., who was writing certain letters, and uh, maybe Blavatsky was writing certain letters in his name. And he asked some questions, and uh, Master K.H., through Blavatsky, I think, said, look, I can't talk about this, because you are asking some questions that apply 
to the secrets of the sixth initiation. <laughs> so in our, with our inquiring minds, we may get way beyond ourselves, and it will all be revealed in good time. The important thing is to use the important thing is to use what we do have and to use it in a good way so that humanity can make this transition into the age of Aquarius in a safe way. So anyway, one illustration of this normally emerges in our minds if it be remembered that in this world cycle, uh, in our systemic manifestation, so it is solar systemic, right? It's solar systemic. It is the second or consciousness aspect, uh, that of the second logos, the sun, which is uh, the dominant conditioning factor and which sets the note for evolutionary development and which engrosses the attention of evolving human units. In other words, we are in the solar system of the sun. There are three major solar systems. Uh, whoops, that's not correct. <laughs> Let's see how many S's I need to have. Two, three, four, five. There are three major solar systems. And um, we are in the second major solar system. Uh, at really the fifth in order, but the second major. Uh, we are in the second uh, and the theme um, is love wisdom. Now, it's going to revolve trillions of years ahead, and maybe we'll be involved in it. Who knows what will be by that time or what we'll be manifesting as. There will be another solar system, the sixth, and the triangle will revolve, the major triangle will revolve, and the will aspect will be on top. Now, even that works out in your own life. When you're a primitive human being, and we've all been that, it's the intelligence aspect that's on the top of the triangle, and we're learning something about developing intelligence, however slowly. Now, we have reached the stage near the first initiation when the love aspect is coming in, regardless of what your soul ray may be. So the triangle revolves. And then once we build the Antikarana and begin to deal with the spiritual triad and even some of the higher initiations, third and fourth and fifth, the monad comes in, the triangle revolves again, and the will aspect is on the top of the, tri uh, the apex. So you get the principle, triangles in rotation. So, um, okay, this is the case even when other factors are present and active. Okay, it's the second aspect of divinity in our solar system, which is so important. We are a heart center. We are a heart chakra. Our solar system is a heart chakra in a cosmic logos, in a local great being, and we're the heart. And so no matter what your ray, where you live, what planet you live on, you're all part of a great heart center. And uh, even though that is the case, the will is there, intelligence is there, they're just not as prominent as that which has to be developed. Therefore, all approaches to truth and to knowledge must, in this cycle, world cycle, solar systemic cycle, trillions of years, <laughs> if, if the ancient Brahmanic chronology is correct, then it takes 311 trillion and 40 billion years to manifest a solar system on all levels. Now, is that correct? Well, Blavatsky said it was correct. Other people say, oh, it's much too long, much too long. But okay, we don't know yet, but we have the idea that it may be correct a huge amount of time. And then there's that space in between, which is uh, like a pralaya, it's like death, it's like living in the higher worlds, and then, you know, it, it lasts just as long as the solar system. So trillions of years ahead, let us say, with some degree of safety, there will be another solar system, and its emphasis will be on the will. Okay, 
In another cycle, such an approach, yeah, may be focused on the will, okay, or even in some already present but unrealized divine attribute, because DK says, look, you think you know all the divine attributes, but you really don't. I can't even talk about all these things because you've never even been able to imagine them. And you say, we don't have any names for these other divine attributes, but you can be sure that they will be part of a numerological system. Okay, so we don't have a name. All that any man can consequently bring to the comprehension of life experience or to the understanding of such an occult science as the science of triangles. Now, if we're having trouble with it, you know, that's why it's really an occult science. Uh, is a consciousness. That's what we want to bring to these studies, and we can do it. It's a consciousness which is developed to a certain definite and personal point of perception or awareness. Now, we bring to our understanding the, the level of consciousness that we have. This point of perception, he says, is itself dependent upon individual unfoldment and also upon the state of awareness of humanity as a whole, because humanity's state will lift up many people into greater possibility of more acute perception. So this connotes two different, though interrelated, conditions of perception. And I wonder if he's going to describe that. Remember, you're expanding your consciousness, so your perception should be increasing all the time. You, I, we are cultivating our consciousness, especially on this planet with its secondary soul and in this solar system, which is the solar system of the sun. It is the fifth solar system, if we count all of the preceding ones, and it's the second major solar system. And that means that the rays number two and number five are prominent in this solar system, and those are precisely the rays connected with the solar angel. They, they, they uh, manifest on the fifth plane, and they are hearts of fiery love, giving that great second aspect. Speaking technically, has he not been speaking technically? <laughs> speaking technically, perception, think about that, perception and response or the activity of, of perceiving, um, observing consciousness, the activity of the perceiving, observing consciousness carried on through the medium of the mechanism of response, which we are always refining, is dependent on the condition or of aliveness of the centers or their quiescence. Okay, so how alive are our centers? There are various degrees of aliveness in any triangle within our etheric body. It can just be starting. It can be uh, at a medium phase. It can be vibrant and in rotation. We have to cultivate the increased livingness of our chakras. Now, how do we do that? Well, not necessarily by direct attack. The, the Tibetan or some other master might give us a particular exercise to do that, but in general, when we work on soul consciousness, on the Antikarana, on receiving triadal impression or monadic impression, the aliveness of the centers uh, increases uh, automatically, and so we sort of stay out of it. Uh, so anyway, we perceive, now what's the principle involved here? We perceive according to the aliveness of our centers and how we live, what we think, how we meditate, how we serve, all of that determines the aliveness of our centers. So this is true, uh, he says, of a man galvanized into activity through his seven centers. It's also true of a planetary logos through seven planetary centers, which we tend to to call uh, uh, chains, I guess. Um, a planetary scheme has seven chains and maybe some invisible ones. It's, it's, it's true of a solar logos functioning through still greater centers, which are 
planetary schemes, um, still greater centers of vibratory activity, or still greater lives, functioning through an aggregate of solar systems, like a constellation. I showed you that, page 293. It's a very useful little map to give us a sense of proportion. Upon this activity and its understanding depends the whole science of astrology. Remember, it's a third-ray science in many ways, and the science of triangles is a third-ray uh, activity as well. It is rooted in three great beings who uphold the third aspect of divinity in Shambhala, namely the three Buddhas of activity. So the connection to the number three is very strong in the science of triangles and uh, also, you know, in, in astrology. And the Tibetan himself, I think, like the Buddha, has, uh, at least for one of his monadic rays, the third ray. So, uh, and then he says, um, in this statement, I give you a clue. Well, someone will have to work it out, which may someday revolutionize the present approach to astrology. I guess we'll be studying how our chakras get activated when we look at our astrological chart and the various triangles that are in our astrological chart and how we can cultivate the vivification of these triangles. Now, DK said, look, you've got a lot of triangles in your etheric system, but at any one time, one of those triangles, any one incarnation, is standing out the most. It is the most active, the most focal, the most pivotal. It is what you're working on. Yes, you're thinking ahead. Yes, you've accomplished something in the past, but there is a triangle. I used to ask that, you know, of, of people in class. If you were to, maybe we think about this for a minute. If you were to look at your etheric energy system and you were to choose a triangle that you felt was really being cultivated in your evolution at this time, what would that triangle be? And which uh, apex of the triangle, which angle, would be the foremost? In other words, what would be occupying the main position? You know, now, <clears throat> one of the major triangles, of course, is head, heart, and throat. And maybe we might think about that throat, third ray, heart, second ray, head, first ray. And what would be on top? Maybe for some people it would be the heart. Maybe for some people it would be the throat. It, very interesting that at a certain point, maybe it's at the first initiation, the monad anchors itself. The man doesn't know this, but the monad anchors itself in one of the major chakras, head, heart, or throat. Probably the third ray monads in the throat, the second ray monads in the heart, and the first ray monads somehow in the head. So, you know, he gives us a lot of hints. It's going to take a while uh, to develop these things. And I know there are a lot of good esoteric astrologers working on these matters. So, um, in the future, this is going to unfold. And we're going to understand much more how to use astrology to stimulate the chakric setup in our system, the triangles, which have to be animated. All right. Now, um, cultivation, cultivation. Okay. Let's see if I'm going to do any more right now. Maybe not. Um, yeah, I think it's um, it's a whole nother subject, and it deals with uh, two groups of signs, and it's pretty intricate. Um, the 12 signs of the zodiac fall into two groups of signs, and their related synthesis has much to do with the science of triangles, and we just have to figure out how that is the case. So there are seven signs related to the unfoldment of planetary consciousness upon the earth, and only incidentally to the fourth grade of hierarchy of the human. And there are five signs related to the unfoldment in time and space 
of the human hierarchy, which, you know, is the fourth creative hierarchy. These five signs are of major conditioning importance and may be enumerated as follows. And I wonder, you know, as I've looked at these, whether they are in order. Now, maybe they are. And you might say, well, begin with the Lemurian group, but I don't think he does. There's Cancer, Leo, um, Scorpio, Capricorn, and Pisces. And remember, he says right here, these five signs are related in the planetary sense to the five great races, and here's the hint of which our present race, the Aryan race, is the fifth. So what were the races that make the Aryan race the fifth? Now, look, I, I know I said I'm not going to do this, and I'm not really going to do this right now. I'm simply going to sort of set up the consideration of it. Now you say, well, okay, we're studying the science of triangles. Why are we studying astrology simultaneously? They are so absolutely interrelated that we cannot separate them. When you're looking at the triangles in your etheric system, you are looking at planetary relations. You are looking at zodiacal relations. You know, you're looking at the relations of the three great constellations. That's what has caused these chakras and their relation to the triangles within your system. And these triangles within your system and their cultivation determines how you evolve. So, if from the larger point of view, when we're dealing with the science of triangles, we've got to study uh, along the astrology uh, and the rheology that goes with it. Now, you may never be, you know, a, a professional esoteric astrologer. It doesn't make any difference. Alice Bailey, I begin to wonder, I don't even think, you know, she knew how to draw up a horoscope, but she knew the larger uh, implications of astrology as it related to consciousness. And she considered that uh, to be the most important. So some astrology we can learn. And these days, of course, you know, in the, in the ancient days, I remember I had my little calculator and a, a pencil and a, and a big eraser. And I was drawing up the charts and it took me an hour per chart to get it ready. And all kinds of mathematical uh, stuff had to be done. Now that's taken care of for us so we can get into the interpretive area. And we're very fortunate about that. So anyway, this is where I'll probably um, begin next time. You can, you can see we're into cosmology. He's going to relate this to various continents, their signs, their rays. I've made some speculations down here. Every continent is the externalization of a chakra or is a kind of a gland within the uh, planetary system. And I've uh, made some speculations here. Um, so uh, all of this relates. So I'll go back here and I'll say that uh, I'll just review a little bit next time that this is the end of Science of Triangles number 15. Uh, and today is the 6th of July. <coughs> and uh, some fine morning, about two weeks from now, we'll have the beginning of Science of Triangles uh, number 17. And let's just let, allow me to check when this is. It'll be the 20th, and we might have some activities going on here, but we'll do our best still to uh, be present. Okay. All right, friends. Now, don't let your head spin. You know, don't let your head spin. Uh, <laughs> let's put it like this. If you, if you use the fifth ray and you study the isolated uh, factor, whatever it may be, an energy center, a ray, whatever, study it like a laser beam. Apply your mind like a laser beam. Learn everything you can about that particular thing and about other th particular things. Then you can bring out Mercury and its ability to correlate using the fourth ray, I, I would say, and the third ray to a degree. 
and you can correlate these things that you have studied carefully. Do you think DK wants us to study? Well, you know, of course, you know, he's the product of centuries and centuries of study. And with respect to the ray energies, the astrological energies, the energies of the spiritual hierarchies, creative hierarchies, <coughs> excuse me, he's considered to be the most learned of the present masters. Now, you know, that's a, that's a big statement. And he is somehow conveying uh, part of what he knows to us so that we can cultivate uh, pure reason. If we cultivate pure reason, it will be an aspect of the intuition and it will be one of the doorways into buddhic consciousness. And we will no longer simply be limited by the ordinary mind, whether that is the concrete mind or the abstract mind, but we will get into something ruled by Mercury called the transcendental mind. Now that's what we're on our way to, uh, via pure reason, to cultivate pure reason. And there's another term called inclusive reason. It relates to the second ray, and he deals with that uh, in esoteric uh, psychology too, because it's all about how to create soul fusion, soul infusion on the second ray. So, you know, we have uh, isolated unity, uh, inclusive reason, and presented attributes on the third ray and all the subsidiary rays. So it's a great study, and we learn uh, to be intelligent about our environment. Okay, then th now it's time. Let's see, Tuya, did you have something that you wanted to say here about this? Uh, Michael, do you hear me? I do very well, yes. Yes. Okay, because I am again on my computer and on my mobile. Well, I hear you well. And I hope everybody okay, good. too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, when we talk about these uh, big um, principles and, and this huge uh, picture, there, then I was just thinking again uh, that if we could manage to do some kind of map Mm. for the next time uh, comparing all of these different stages and um, I was just wanting to point out that there is actually now the new uh, chart for the evolution of the solar logos. Do I have that? You was... Do I have that? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I tried to send but I couldn't, I couldn't send via this system. I don't know how to do that but anyway that's ready and the second thing is about this um, uh, maybe in this meditation this short meditation that we have that we will again as a group focus upon Syria because um, as said that the, the Buddhas of activity can use the triangles for them during the emergencies and there is this um, emergency meeting of the United Nations mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also this situation is uh, again out of the hand and this point uh, plays or how do you say the, the the space or states in in Syria area in our planet is out of our hand, uh, hands and control yeah yeah it comes down to very concrete concrete things that have to change absolutely and here in here in finland uh, shortly i know you'll bring it up but uh, uh donald trump and putin are meeting right here in this country in just a few days i think maybe even tomorrow i'm not sure uh so uh you know these are factors which the triangles network can redeem and, uh, you know, we've been, uh, what can we say, uh, these great energies are flowing in, but they have to have a practical effect uh, on the improvement of the human consciousness. And right now, we have a lot of glamour and so forth. 
uh, to you. If you can find that that uh, chart somehow of the uh, the big chart, I don't know what happened to me here. I it's the solar. Mm -hmm. It's the solar evolution, and uh, yes, I have the chart, but I don't know how to send it. Okay. Where or how to put it? Okay, well, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll leave that it as a be... nice surprise for next time because it's a beautiful chart. Tuya has been working on these with a lot of uh, detail and uh, a lot of revelation uh, in terms of the interactions. And this big chart on the evolution of a solar logos is, uh, you know, I think it's, it's very good and will help us uh, know... get, get a large conception. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you know how to, if I uh, resend again via your email, do you know then how to uh, transmit that for the group? Yes, yes, I do. If you can resend it, yes. Oh, you know, okay. Yes, if I try yes. To... Resend it, and I'm sorry I got lost. Uh, something happened to me along the way. Do you mean <laughs> to do now? Oh, uh, yeah, you can send it now, and maybe I can pull it out and find a way to, uh, yeah, just. Try to send that, and uh, I, at least we can show it to people, and the enhancements which have been added. Now, what Tui and I decided to do is to take these charts as Master DK gave them, but then to do alternative versions where we're adding in some of the associated information that he uh, chose not to put in the charts, and that can be useful to help us broaden our picture of all that's really going on. Notice in this particular chart how these triangles are at work and where they are. You see a lot of triangles, don't you? You see a triangle all the way up there on the Logoic Plain. That's a, that's a new one. You know, maybe it's the Council Chamber of Shambhala. You see the Triangle of the Monad, the Triangle of the Spiritual Triad. Every one of those petals, uh, the red, the blue, the green, they are triangles too. And then you see, um, you see on the uh, higher subplanes, the head, heart, and throat. And then below that, you see a kind of a triangle with the base of the spine, the generative organs, and the solar plexus. So it's just loaded with triangles, the mental unit, astral permanent atom, physical permanent atom, triangles everywhere. So we have to understand that we are in the midst of... Uh, a, a huge triangular setup, and the big objective at this time is to take the pattern of squares, which characterizes our non-sacred planet, and uh, as Master DK said, esoterically bisect the square. Esoterically bisect the square, make out of it two triangles, and I have a feeling that that's when he was uh, Clinius in the old days of uh, Pythagoras, I think his teacher Pythagoras, the future Master K.H., taught him how to do that. So we have our uh, work. Yes, go ahead. Yes, to you? Sorry. Yes. It's go sent. Ahead. It is sent now. It is sent. Okay, good, good, good. Good, good, good. All right, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, good. Now, uh, let's, um, let's, we have some questions or, or some statements. Uh, and... Uh, so I'm just going to go over here. Uh, oh, okay, Alex. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, I'm not hearing the beeps anymore uh, yet. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to um, the next SCOT should be number 16. You're right, Carrie. And I hope I didn't. Uh, ah, you are so right. <laughs> I just skipped sweet 16. All righty. Thank you. Um, and uh, two years going to determine how we're going to uh, distribute these charts and in what form. Um, oh, and uh, here are a few things going on. The triad of the, and I'm sorry, Alex, you are having this difficulty, but you still seem to be here. The triad of the Soda Logos is the Great Bear, the Pleiades, and Sirius. What constellations uh, are the triad? Well, look, I'll tell you what. Um, the solar, uh, and Veronica, the, um, the, really what's going on here is that the Pleiades, at least some of them, 
the little bear taking the place of Sirius. It's a much greater energy source, and Sirius is kind of a blind for the little bear. He talks about this. And then the great bear. So the seven of the great bear, the seven of the little bear, and probably the seven Pleiades form a 21, which feeds into our solar system. And our solar system is a little peanut compared to all of this. And these energies control it. But within our solar system are other triangles formed of, um, well, other triangles formed of planetary schemes. For instance, the synthesizing planets are a triangle. Uranus first ray, Neptune second ray, Saturn third ray. And there are many, many other triangles formed by planets within the chakra system of our solar logos. Now, if we go to our cosmic logos, where we have seven major suns, our sun, our solar system, is a heart center. Is Sirius involved in these? If it is, maybe it's the head center or the Ajna center. Um, is Alpha and Beta Centauri, are they involved? Well, maybe they have more to do with the uh, sacral center. So there are about seven major solar systems in that system we call the seven solar systems of which ours is one and our sun is a heart center there so we cannot say that within our solar logos the triad of the solar logos is the great bear pleiades and sirius Th that is a triangle beyond our solar system that uses it and other solar logoi to transmit quality into these solar systems. So it, it, they are not included within the solar logos, I'm sure you know that, but they are uh, the sponsors of the energy that's coming into the solar logos. Okay, all right, let me just see, just I wanna get, uh, some people have their actual hand up uh, and we've got that going on. Okay, and Vera, you have your hand up actually, so just go ahead and you can speak. Okay. Um, in one of your commentaries on intuition, uh, you mentioned that when we transfer energy from sacral center to the throat, the mental elemental is involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. When this ha happens, happens from solar plexus to heart, then the astral elemental. Now, my understanding is that the cha each chakra actually occupies the the etheric astral and mental as well uh, so can yes it, it does except for the mental plane where the solar angel has inserted itself yes and we yes. do not have until the solar angel goes away you know returns yeah. we don't yeah. have the the upper triangle of chakras we don't but but if you go into esoteric healing, you know, I think it's on page 51. I, I'm just trying to remember. There are different rulerships for these different chakras. Let me just see. They're, they're, they are the same as the etheric. But, uh, yeah, okay, so here's something. Here's one chart. Uh, the head center, heart center, second ray, uh, sacral center, third ray. Fourth ray Ajna center. See, this is a different kind of chart showing you different rays that work through the astral chakras. And I think there's something on page, I'm not sure, I think I may be wrong here, but uh, well, somewhere there's another chart that shows, um, that shows how it all works out on the astral plane. It does not show how it works out on the mental plane. In other words, different rays may control different chakras. But it, it, it's the home of the, um, there's no question about it, the mental elemental has its home on the uh, in the sacral center. Let's see if I can find the reference. Sacral. It's, it's page, page 304. Okay, uh, in, in what book? Esoteric Psychology 2. Okay. And it's just brief mentioning on it. Well, there it is. That's it. The sacral center, 
the mental elemental life transferred later to the throat center. The solar plexus, the astral elemental life transferred to the heart center and the center of the basic spine, physical elemental. There it is. Okay, right. So uh, is your question about what's going on on the other planes with respect to that? I, I was... I was sort of puzzled that <clears throat> first the that the sacral center has the mental elemental, and then I had to reason. Okay, it yeah. extends uh, onto the lower mental as well. So yes, yes, that's correct. And remember that the, of the three of the three uh, centers, not including the spleen, below the the um, diaphragm, the sacral center distributes the third ray which fits with the mentality. It also has seventh ray, of course, but the solar plexus is the second ray center relatively, although it has the sixth ray, and the base of the spine is the first ray center. So it all yeah. fits plus the seventh ray. So, you know, how that I... transfer works out is difficult to say. Yes, uh, who is who is speaking? Go ahead. I was Tuya. Yeah, Tuya go yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead, Tuya. Yeah. Yeah, I was just adding to this picture that um, the Deva Kingdom is the planetary sacral center. Yes. And when we think about Deva Kingdom, um, it is related to the third aspect, the mother, the intelligence aspect, the in that sense working aspect. And that's why whatever we talk about our elementals, they are always the lower substances or the lower sub substance within us. And when we th uh, think about the animals, how the uh, mentality is developed in animal kingdom, it's via the, uh, the sexual impulses and via hunting the food. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the uh, elemental life in animals are uh, cultivated to uh, start to focus or gather together aggregate together and in that sense it is the ideation or the mentality and it is then developed into the mental unit mm. as well along that, the way that mental yeah. unit really has a long history it goes way way back i i remember i have a reference about how early it begins to form and the same with the causal body it has a long history before the form in, uh, of what we're used to uh, takes place. So these are some obscure references in Cosmic Fire. I have to find them, but suffice it to say, um, the lower part of the mind is very connected with the sacral center. And as we begin to take the first initiation, all of this uh, connection to the lower mind rises to the throat center and also begins to connect to the soul and to the monastic permanent atom. So at least we know where we're beginning. And it's, it's very interesting. Still, yes, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, still one, uh, one thing point for Vera. Then when we think about this process of our initiation in human unit, um, the mental elemental is uh, uh, transmitted or transformed into the deva on the mental plane and I think it is the activity I have not been finding uh, or maybe he has uh, said somewhere but I, I don't just recall at the moment but on um, around the fourth uh, subplane or the mental plane there there must happen this kind of movement in that kingdom mm -hmm. to the uh, time deva the, the mental deva who is then in my understanding more uh, to be used by uh, or the for the solar angel when we think this at first the human being is the one who is guarding one's own uh, um, microcosmos and then when we have this movement in our initiation to the higher life then the solar angel can use those little um, lives uh, when this trans, uh, transition is made on the mental plane. Yes, uh, you know, it's very interesting. Elementals uh, become devas, and yeah. human beings become angels. You know, there, there's a graduate point. In other words, like you, 
you get your wings, as it were. And when you look at the uh, planetary logos, it's as much a man as a deva. In other words, it's called a heavenly man, but it also has that equal balancing devic component. So he is Red, called Mahadeva. Mahadeva? He is. He's called Mahadeva. Okay. Well, there we go. You see. So that balancing does come along, and I and I guess for certain of the uh, devas, the equipment of a man also becomes possible when you look at Kishiti and. Varuna and some of these other Rajadeva lords, they have all the equipment that a human being would have and beyond, and they are invited into the council chamber of Sanat Kumara for consultation. So they are, you know, composite beings in a way. And they have um, a kind of a, a extraordinary uh, ability. And all of this uh, relationship between man and Deva, it's a very paralleling kind of thing but on the monadic plane it reaches a point of uh, not just harmony but of interpenetration and uh, similarity so uh, you know there's what do they say there's battle between men and devas on the astral plane harmony on the buddhic plane and identity uh, a word like that on the monadic plane Anyway, we have to study these, you know, in, in the, uh, what is it to you, in the, uh, our, our course number 260 in the Moria Federation, where we're dealing with the David Kingdom, a lot of these subjects are taken up. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's just see wh who else we have here. Um, I, I just want to see, uh, I answered, and Veronica and Carrie alerted us to something there. And let's see if there's anything. Uh, uh, Alex uh, was having some difficulty, and that's over. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Now, are there any other thoughts or questions that you want to deal with regarding uh, occultism in general, or the kinds of things we have been talking about with these interpenetrating triangles? We're about to go into, um, coming up shortly, 18 major energies. And I, I, some of you have seen these, and, and here they are, uh, the, the extensions of the Great Bear, Sirius, and the Pleiades, and the cosmic, zodiacal, systemic, uh, earth, and human uh, relations. So we'll spend some time on that. It's another major chart, and it's either coming up the next time, or I, I suspect maybe the next time, or the time after that. And we have to have those lines of descent as clear as um, possible. You know, you usually think, well, hey, Saturn, if you know astrology, you know that Saturn is not very happy in the sign Leo. It's uh, because it rules Aquarius partially. Then you go to the opposite sign and it's said to be in detriment and it doesn't get a chance to express or radiate the way it should but when you look at these other higher charts then the first ray of saturn is a major conductor of energy from the great bear through leo uh, and into shambhala so it all depends on the level that you are studying yeah okay here is uh here is ario uh hold on go ahead ario Okay, can you hear me? Very well, actually. Okay. I, I am uh, studying this pranayama, and there it is uh, uh, mentioned that through the factor of the breath, man becomes aware of the unity of life, and that brotherhood is the fact in the nature. Mm. That uh, how we should thinking that uh, this would be the case that the brotherhood is the fact in the nature. If we look at the uh, uh, animal kingdom and also this human kingdom. Uh, yeah, how they presently it, are, it is, you know, you know <laughs> killing each other and so forth. Uh, he's talking, uh, Ario, as far as I understand, about a monadic relationship. The true brotherhood is found on the monadic plane 
where the beings are identical and they recognize all of themselves as sons or daughters or emanations of the one being. So it's on that high level. And when he uses the word nature, I don't think he means necessarily all the form lives of animals and plants and men. He means something larger that underlying okay. all of this is the monad and everybody shares that one monad. So uh, maybe, maybe I don't know, you know, sometimes I just go on a little hunt here and something comes up. I'm not sure, but let's see. Brotherhood monad. There's two references. Um, and I'm not sure that I can. Okay. Uh, the last two were taken upon the ray of the monad. Uh, brotherhood. Okay, let's see what else we've got. And this is, yeah, maybe this one is it about uh, life energy. Um, those again who are interested, okay, it says, uh, we call this unknown something by different names according to our school, particular school of thought. We seek to express it in words. We call it by spirit, the one life monad or energy now um, again we must remember that understanding as to the nature see that that means the meaning of it as to the nature of this one life is purely relative it depends on how high a being you are those who are engrossed in the form side of existence think in terms of physical vitality feeling impulse mental force and do not pass beyond the unified life consciousness of which all the above are differentiations. See, it's the unified life consciousness which is the brotherhood. Those, again, who are interested more in the metaphysical approach and in the soul life more than the form aspect express their concept in terms of soul manifestation and passing beyond the personal selfish reactions of the body nature, think in terms of life, in terms of quality, of group will or power, group coordination or love wisdom, and of group intelligence covered, covering all by the generic term brotherhood. Generic term brotherhood. So that gives an idea of what he means by brotherhood. And in the third part of the Aquarian age, when Venus is ruling and Libra is ruling and love wisdom is ruling, we will have a very strong uh, demonstration of brotherhood. So it's a big term and it doesn't mean the animals are killing each other, human beings are killing each other, but he says a very interesting thing. He says the rays hate and kill each other until a certain degree of advancement where they begin to see that they are all interrelated. In the beginning, when consciousness is small, there's all this war. Later, brotherhood and the higher spirit comes into effect. I hope that gives an idea of how he uses the term. Okay, thanks, Michael. Okay, thank you, Ario. It's a good question. It's a good question when we face how, how life is at the moment with how Tibetan says it is essentially. Okay, so let's see. Michael, go ahead, go ahead. If you, read, if you read still a little bit further to this, this same, the next um, chapter, or the, not, not chapter, but the- The next paragraph? Just read, okay. uh, paragraph. Okay, but even uh, that, go ahead, you read it. But even that is found to be separative through the separation into larger units than the lower is capable of grasping. Therefore, the initiate, especially after the third initiation, begins to think even more synthetically and to express truth to himself in terms of spirit, life, the one. Mm. These terms mean to him something significant, but something so far removed from the concept of ordinary thinking humanity that it is needless for me to enlarge, yeah, yeah, enlarge further on it. Very important. Uh, look, you know, we're all heading for the third initiation one day. And that is the place where the monad becomes conscious 
and the monad is spirit, life, and the one. So what I would suggest to everybody is that we do have will, we do have love, and we do have intelligence, another great triangle. But in the center of that triangle is what you call pure being. And that is what we really are. So if it's possible to begin to, to see pure being, that's what we want. Can we begin to cognize, recognize, somehow detect the presence of pure being, not quality, not will, not love, not intelligence, not beauty, not mind, not aspiration, not organization, all those things, seven great qualities of life and utterly important. But within it all, behind it all, through it all, is the fact that something is. It just is. And no matter what it is, good or bad or indifferent, it is. And the isness is that point in the center of the triangle. So I suggest that uh, we work on that, you know, and every once in a while I revive uh, the, the little group called Identification as Being, and uh, before long <clears throat> I will revive it again uh, for some more uh, investigation into the raw fact of being. Now, you know, it's just way beyond analysis. It has nothing to do with difference. It has to do with sameness. And uh, the old Buddha is saying, you know, uh, that a human being has arrived when he can look in every direction and see all things as the same, which doesn't mean you can't handle the variety of life. It's just another layer of very deep perception, if you understand what I'm trying to get across here. Okay? All right. Okay, uh, now, are there any other questions or thoughts on occultism or anything that we have read on this science of triangles? You know, for all practical purposes, the triangles that we have to worry about, not worry, but deal with, are right in our own etheric body. And, uh, you know, if you, if you go into the Cosmic Fire book, which is uh, somewhere... <laughs> Let's see if I can find this here. If you go into the Cosmic Fire book and you go to maybe page 169 or something like that, you're going to see a bunch of triangles. A pranic triangle, a triangle uh, that is in the head and around the head and indicates the third initiation finally when it's really working. You're going to see that a human being controlled on the astral plane has predominantly this triangle, base of spine, solar plexus, heart. If he's controlled from the mental plane, it's going to be base of spine, heart, throat. If he's partially controlled by the soul or ego, he's the advanced man, heart, throat, and the four lesser centers in the head and the alta major center. If he's from the first to the third initiation, Heart, throat, and the seven head centers will control him. And if he's from the third initiation to the fifth, heart, the seven head centers, and the two many petaled lotuses, which I assume to be the uh, crown center and the asthma center. So that's, that's what we're dealing with. That's what we have to bring into <clears throat> functional activity so that we really improve our etheric system. But our relationship to our horoscope and to the different triangles we find there show us some of the lines of least resistance of what we can cultivate in this particular life with, uh, with not too much interference in the way. So we can read our horoscope in terms of our chakras and how we can use the relationship between the two to cultivate the chakric system with the advice of the horoscope. And of course, 
the advice of our rate chart. When a, when a new rate chart shows up, it shows an area of focus and concentration that you can work on to lift yourself just a little higher in consciousness to appreciate a little more of reality. Okay. Anything else, friends, before? I think, Tuya, are you going to lead the uh, little triangle yeah. me meditation? Sure. Yeah, okay. Sure. And, and and remember, when we, when we do this meditation, just kind of conceptualize that big web of space that is somehow feeding all the practical things that we more commonly uh, deal with when we're thinking of the triangle. So any other uh, questions or comments that you have? And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, we're going to meet again. Today is the 6th on the 20th. You know, Tui and I have a, some sessions going on here, but I think it's okay. I think we can meet on the 20th, no problem. Um, and, yeah. And then we have a group that is coming here. Okay. And uh, maybe some of you are members of the Blue Rose Sisters. And if you're interested in our get-together, please write to Tuya. And uh, she can let you know uh, more about it. She has some very uh, interesting things planned. So uh, if you're interested, just write and we'll see whether you can get yourself here or not. And it would be wonderful if you could. Okay, so Tuya, if you would like to go ahead, you want me, maybe I'll just keep this map up while you're having the meditation, is that okay? Yeah, or you can put also the one where we have the hierarchy. It's up to you. We, we actually don't need anything, we don't study that way. But no, but something, we can start. Something's going to be yeah. on the screen anyway, so I'll tell you what I'll do, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll do this other one which is uh, interesting, and you suggested it, uh, that's it. The hierarchy. Yeah, yes, that's it. Okay, that's very good. Yeah. Okay, just go ahead. Okay, we let us all align, center ourselves. And then we form a triangle of light between our souls our head center and with Master DK, thus forming the triangle of light related to him. And let us, as a group, focus also with the United Nations and give our support All that what is going on on the level of the meetings, which is considering and in that being standing firmly for support, let us align with our own triangles. And now about three minutes, let us call our triangle members by name with love.
Kristo. And making this process even stronger, visualize the flow of love and goodwill which is passing between the members of your triangles. Visualize also how the flow of spiritual light is passing between the members of your triangles. And we can recognize what it does to the etheric field when we connect to our triangles how it changes more living. Link with the global network of golden triangles. And let us really try to visualize that living entity. The living group work throughout the planet. And in that field, we realize that we are under the eye of the great Shambhalic triangle, the three Buddhas of activity in Shambhala. And today we add to this emergency what is again in Syria, aligned with Master Jesus, even though he would not be your Master. But it is said that he is in Syrian body, and that has to mean something. And what is his job at this time for the preparation of the coming of the great avatar of love. He has to help the churches in the world. And the sixth ray, which is outrageous at the moment in those particular places, like in Syria. So let us bring collective help and aid being ready if we could be used at this moment to bring wisdom and harmony, the loving understanding, right relationships and peace to Syria, and the surrounding countries.
imagine yourself in that heated spot which may be expressing something about the solar plexus activity and sacral activity in humanity. And let us sound the great invocation. And imagine how it is sounding in that area and then reaching the hierarchy and calling help from our side. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the mind so many. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which, which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Ooh. Ooh. And we see the global network of golden triangles covering the entire planet. We endeavor to realize the factual nature of this great living spiritual organism, which constantly substance and underlies the world affairs. Let us see it as a growing vital reality of such life and potency that it can break through or break up all limiting outer cleavages by the very force of its interior life, eventually externalize itself. And let us sustain, sustain the circulation of love and light throughout the day and nights and especially throughout this very, very difficult period in humanity that we will all stand in aid the best we can. And by keeping our triangles very, very living. And thank you. <clears throat> thank you to you. <clears throat> thank you. Um, tonight we have at five PM. Um, 
the Dissipation of Glamour webinar. As you know, we are continuing uh, reading the book straight through, just as we, uh, during the reappearance of the Christ broadcast, are reading the reappearance of the book straight through. And we're working uh, in that way with the Destiny of the Nations. These are all uh, books that are part of the important assimilation process. Also in the chat box, as I said, you have three links uh, that take you to the, the video commentaries on the first, second, and third initiations, uh, commenting on the compilations that you will find there. And soon I hope to continue uh, the process of the White Magic book. Mm. There are 50 programs on Makara of White Magic. And they go all the way through the rules for the mental plane plus the introduction. So we'll take up before long the rules for the astral plane and then the rules for the eth etheric physical plane. Uh, Tui and I want to thank you for uh, being here with us uh, this morning, at least it is for us or whatever time it is for you. And uh, we'll be uh, in touch with you. Hope to see you uh, in a number of hours for the Dissipation of Glamour uh, webinar. Okay. Take care. Lots of love. And we'll, we'll see you later. See you later. Bye-bye.